Uh, well, let's let's start with uh, with Duncan. I know that uh, uh, post moon that you weren't uh, necessarily out looking for material. Uh, is that right? But this one came to you. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I have a, a history of going to actors with projects which I think are great, and them coming back and saying, "Actually, you know what? <laughs> uh, I, I had the chance to meet up with Jake, who I was a, who I, who I am and was a huge fan of, hoping that we would find something to work on together." And uh, Jake was sort of already uh, aware of this script source code and, and let me know about it. And um, that's kind of all how it all started. So, so Jake, how did you find the script then? If uh, you seem to have gotten on board before, uh, even before the director. <laughs> so, um, I had uh, I had been given the script by Mark Gordon, the producer who had who had developed it with uh, Jordan Wynn. Uh, I just thought it was incredible, and we just had to find the right person to, you know have a vision for it and once we you know could match that then it would be incredible because you know it has a tendency I think uh, with a movie like this to push one genre you know thriller or only sci-fi or only drama because people have a talent or you know a filmmaker only have a talent one area and when I met with Duncan and I had seen Moon I thought oh my gosh like this guy knows how to do all of those things and um, and we sent it to him randomly almost like a shot in the dark like oh like you know Maybe, but probably not. And five days later, he's like, I want to do this movie. And it just was amazing. So that's how. And then I was definitely, I mean, the point, the point of that is that I was definitely in, this was something I want to do as soon as he said he wanted to do it, because we had a vision. Well, Michelle, there, the, what's really, to me, interesting about this movie is that pretty much everybody uh, around you has an entire movie to build, to build their character, to build an arc. And you essentially have the same eight minutes, just different version of eight minutes to explain to the audience who you are. Uh, was that particularly challenging in any way? Yeah, I think initially going into it, it was kind of daunting. I think when I first read it, I thought, well, how are we going to make this happen? And, yeah. and really still engaging for the audience. And, but yet, as an actor, I think you really kind of jump at those opportunities because it's, an, you know, it's a really cool opportunity to do something different and uh, the same, but different. Um. <laughs> but can you talk a little bit about approaching the, uh, uh, a character like that yeah. who has a lot of exposition and you were still able to find the heart of the character? It does. It, it you know, took me by surprise, uh, the character, because on the written page it's everything that I detest, <laughs> in all honesty, about, about um, a character. And I, I'm usually drawn to the antithesis <laughs> of who this woman is. And I think that was what drew me, and aside, I mean, I, I, I watched Moon eight times and peddled it to everybody that I knew. Yeah. So, I mean, once I saw Duncan's name attached, I was in. I love, you know, his storyteller, his stories are just intricate puzzles, and I wanted to be a piece of it. Uh, how were you able to keep all that straight in your, in your head? How, how were you able to realize your, your story and tell what's at the very center of it, a very human and very, very emotional story? No, it, was, it was a continuity nightmare. Uh, and I think what I finally realized was not to get bogged down into the minute by minute where is everything <laughs> for those eight minutes, no. but to strip away a lot of the science uh, and, and really focus on a character mystery. Yeah. Uh, one of the names in the credits that was kind of interesting was Scott Bakula, and I was curious if you could talk a little bit about how that casting came to be. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, uh, <laughs> There's, you know, there's, I'm a sci-fi guy, and, and um, there's, a, there's a lot of films and TV shows and things which kind of uh, inform and help create a, a, a background to, to new sci-fi as it's made. I, I was finding things which I found kind of elements which, which kind of reflected uh, the TV show Quantum Leap at part, in parts of the film. And I thought, you know, if I'm thinking it, there are going to be other people thinking it. So rather than ignore that fact, I thought it would be the right thing to do is to, you know, little dot for the hat. Um, to people who recognize that, and, and Scott Bakula does an amazing and, and really, uh, I think, emotional cameo in the film, which I think works great. Um, and uh, no, I'm delighted that he agreed to do it, and we even got him to say, oh boy. <laughs> um, I was just wondering, like, what was like the inspiration to set the film in Chicago? I mean, like, I'm from there, and it's always cool to see it filmed, and I was just wondering, like, was there a reason to, like, set it, the film there? Well, um, you know, there's a lot of conversations that we had early on in production about what would be the right city to set the film in. Um, you know, there are the obvious choices. New York, it's had terrorist attacks. Everyone sort of thinks of it as a sort of focal point for international terrorism. And then, you know, there, there's a certain delicacy that you have to treat these kind of issues with. Chicago, it doesn't matter. Not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> which, 
with Chicago, I think you know it's in the middle of the country. Everyone, I think, can can um, can, can can reference it. And, and <laughs> I have a bad sense of humor. I'm sorry. I think they didn't get the Olympics, so we wanted to set it there. <laughs> That's really the real truth. <laughs> Do you anticipate future um, time manipulation projects? <laughs> <laughs> Can you actually travel through time? <laughs> Yes, I do know how to travel through time. Uh, that's uh, that's the great part of my job is I get to um, learn all these amazing things, and I now know how to. So if you want, um, I have a time machine. Uh, that, you know, join me. The DeLorean is outside, and uh, we should. You know, whoever I can fit in the back, you know, you're more than welcome, and wherever you want to go, we will go there. Yeah.